Today is October 2nd, 2024. It is Wizard Wednesday, and it's a good day to join a cult. Uh, channeling in from the Quantum Downs, this is the Black Goat of the Wood, Elf J. Troll, and I've got some friends on stage with me. Hello, it's the uh, Orange Puppet Dota. Hey, everybody, and joining us is... What's up? It's Business Bear. What's Who up? else we got up here? Who else we got? We got Tad. We got Community Tad, and we got one more... Yeah, it's your marketing wizard entropy. Um, just before we get into things, I'm noticing we only have like 16 listeners. So if you're here, time to like, subscribe, comment. Just kidding, this isn't YouTube. But uh, yeah, <laughs> repost the space so that people know that we're doing this and can come hang out. Amazing. Let me try that right now. Yeah, faved. We live. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, guys, we've got a few things to talk about today, I think. Um, uh, Dota, you sent out some new donuts today. Is that right? Hey, yep. Today there is a new drop of donuts. Um, even though the OBT build is closed, the donuts are still very much alive. Um, one of the best ways that you can get donuts is by holding uh, Forgotten Runes assets. So that's wizards, that's warriors, souls, beasts, um, ponies. So yeah, go ahead and check your uh, profile on the donuts website. There's a leaderboard. Um, we've gone through. There's a few people trying to still trying to like kind of spam the referrals, and uh, so there's some folks we took off the leaderboard here and there. Um, a lot of that will be cleaned up. Uh, as we go, but yeah, there's, there's some new donuts out today. So go check it out, go check it out and see how many you got. I'd love to see the screenshots. Dude, you know what I miss? I miss the daily donut. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I've never really asked you, but like, how come we can't do the daily donut? Like, was that tied to the game? Or oh, something? no, we could still do the daily donut. You know what, uh, little dev secret is the daily donut is actually still uh, technically alive on Ronin. So if you're a smart contract wizard, you're you're welcome to go and uh, mint some new donuts. But but that said, I mean, we're not um, really like the, the main thing that the daily donuts were kind of accumulating for was for this donut program during the OBT you know, to give people a chance to get their Ronin wallet set up, to uh, have something fun to do every day. So, yeah, I think we'll, if we if the game comes back up and we're still doing donuts, we'll, maybe we'll turn it back on. Great. Um, speaking of donuts, or no, actually, let me go to that second. Speaking of the game, uh, I wanted to make sure everyone knows that the Runiverse game is up for an award. Uh, but you have to vote for it. Um, you do have to set up a wallet with, I don't even know how to say this. It's like, it's like game.gg, but it's spelled GA3M.gg. Uh, maybe we can share the post up here, um, up in the nest. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, go and vote for the Runiverse game, please. Um, I think it, uh, I think it deserves to win, especially when you see the other games on the list. <laughs> do you have to connect your wallet? How does it work? You do. You have to connect your wallet uh, to vote. Um, That's so fine. I have a lot of wallets. Connect and connect them all. <laughs> gotta gotta connect them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> connect them all. Vote for all. I mean, but let's. Yeah. I mean, could you co connect different wallets and vote multiple times? I'm not saying you should do this. Bear, I have not I tried am. to cheat, but I'm sure you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Shocking! Okay. If, um, if somebody has discovered it, then everybody else is doing it. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, we're already. We're actually speaking of. We're already like in the top contender position. They they did a post, um, and we were included. I think there were probably about twelve games. Um, so obviously something is something is brewing in the in the voting sphere. That's great. Fantastic. And I, I just shared it to the top. So yeah, please go vote. Go for it. And as always, be incredibly careful with your uh, wallets and signing on new websites and checking links, making sure you're not making any transactions you don't want to. Um, you know, we even had a pretty sig significant hack this week. It was super, I felt super bad uh, for the, the holders there where I, I guess actually the ha attack this week was 
installing a VS Code extension. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I made a yeah. post about two on Dentag actually um, retweeted it earlier, but there was a, it came out in the wild actually. Unfortunately, they got it like pretty much the day that it was uploaded, but it's um, a, ver a new extension that's kind of like, you know, it's like if you're trying to, to do a Solidity in VS Code and you get the extension, there's like a bunch of community extensions and one of them is just like a poisoned one that is just like Ethereum. It's like uh, Ethe Solidity for Ethereum uploaded by a quote unquote Ethereum foundation and it has like something like 1.5 million downloads, which are obviously yeah. botted, right? So it's like, yeah. like that was, yeah, yeah. Like that was the first thing that I think that guy gave him some confidence that it was like, like a bunch of downloads. Like, oh, okay, so that seems safe, but not. So definitely, <laughs> definitely. It, it, I think it was very tricky. It's a very tricky attack vector. That's something that I don't think we've ever really seen um, in this yeah. space. So. Man, downloading software is the worst. And it's, yeah. and it's crazy how scammers are just getting like even more sophisticated. Like you wouldn't think that just like, an extension would would kind of do that. So exactly. stay safe out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, and then I so then we we were talking about donuts. Um, I will say a uh, an event that's coming up in a few weeks where you will be able to earn donuts. Actually, I don't even know if I'm supposed to announce this yet, but I'm going to do it anyway, <laughs> and then then we can take it back if we need to. But uh, <laughs> the Halloween event, um, we have a Halloween event. Um, in fact, Sporkly was even asking, what's all this skiing about? Um, so the Halloween event does not actually involve skiing, but it does involve a mountain. Uh, um, and, Could you uh, ski the mountain technically? Could you? A, I don't think you can, Bear. That would can be I bring skis? And just in case, even if I can't scan them out and just try. Okay, you can. Yeah, you can bring them and you can try. Um, but, but but no, it it takes place on Mount Umbra, which I don't even think has snow on it. it just has a bunch of shadow. Um, but uh, but yeah, there will be a special donut uh, that you can collect on Mount Umbra uh, during the Halloween event. This is our third Halloween doing something. I love Halloween. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, this one's gonna be awesome. I mean, if you guys remember the nightmare run uh, that we did one or two years ago, I can't remember. Last year, last year. Yeah, um, this is gonna be similar to that, uh, perhaps better. Um, and do you want to? Do you want to talk about any of like the models that'll be there? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I was gonna say it'll involve the wizards, the souls, and the warriors. <laughs> okay, I just gave myself an applause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, this this will be the first use of the uh, the 3D Warriors. It'll be their debut. Um, so far, the event is titled Might versus Magic. Uh, man, I'm really going all in on the announcement, and I didn't even know we were going to announce it. Today. I didn't know we were talking about it. Today. That's cool. I don't know what I'm going to be looking for. The it, 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 it's officially <laughs> October. It's October. We can talk about it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, Matt. Oh, it's yeah. It's beginning of uh, October. But but yeah, we'll we'll have more information. I don't want to spill. Yeah. Too much we'll yet. yeah we'll put together posts and Twitter posts and, and yeah. formal announcements. But yeah. you guys are the inner circle, so the inner circle gets to know what's coming up. Exactly. Um, so yeah. Anyway, to answer your question, Sporkly, that's what this the skiing is about. Even though there's no skiing. Um. Okay, we've got a few other cult questions I think we should get to. Uh, let's see. There's, there's a few fun ones. Which one do I want to do first? Uh, Igduel is asking, uh, what's the best way to share Shadow's lore? He says, wizards, warriors, and souls have the book of lore, but there's no analog for the shadows. Igduel, I have a great answer for you. Um, and this actually relates to something that I've been working on lately. Um, I think for now, uh, the Wizipedia is the best place to share any Shadows lore. Um, Dota may integrate uh, ordinal book of lore integration later. Um, but right now, I think the Wizipedia is wide open. And I have been exploring the Wizipedia a lot lately. And I've seen that a lot of cult members have put their wizard's lore uh, in the Wizipedia. Um, and I think that's great. Um, like Tanya Del Rio has a whole entry on her Canis Coven and her wizards. Um, so, you know, I think, I think you can put uh, any character you want there, including shadows, you can put their lore in the Wizipedia. The Loracle will still be trained on it. 
Um, and, it, you know, the Wizipedia is more or less an official resource. So yeah. I would say do that for now. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I think that, like, we've talked about doing kind of uh, the Book of Lordinals, right, where it's an Ordinals-backed Book of Lore. Um, I think we're... At the very least, we need to enable shadows for kind of like uh, editing in the book of lore, um, even if it's like off-chain lore, so to speak. So we absolutely need to do that soon. We're also kind of thinking a lot about um, maybe what V2 of the book of lore looks like, and there's a lot of pieces there we'll talk about soon. Uh, I think there's, there's some really important ideas that we can do to like formalize the protocol there's some ideas that we can do on durability, right? Jay of the Sun has been talking about a lot about using AR weave, um, R weave. So I think there's a lot of interesting pieces and, and the shadows will be kind of a part of that. But I think for now, yeah, Wizipedia is a good place for it. Yep. Yep. And, 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 I'm, and I, I'm, I'm happy you brought that up because like I said, I, I've been looking a lot through the Wizipedia lately and the book of lore and the Loracle. Uh, and why have I been doing that? Um, I've been doing a ton of writing lately for the game. Um, and it, it's, it's so much fun. It's the thing that I love doing the most um, when I'm not tied down with like 3D models or something else. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I've, been re I've been DMing uh, cult members about their characters. Um, I've, I've, got, I've got so many of your Book of Lore stories in uh, the game now. Um, you know, it'll take a while to actually show up in the game, but like the production materials, it, it's getting in there and it's, it's so amazing. It's like, I, you know, I, I read the book of lore. I read the Wizipedia. Like we have just as much lore material as like J.R. Tolkien do, does, you know, it's like, you know, people sometimes say like, yeah, you guys don't have a novel or a film or whatever, but we, but we have a full wiki. We have a full book of lore. We have more creative material than, than you might realize. Um, and it's, it's, it's all fueling uh, the, just the, the, the game story right now. Or, I mean, I, I'm working it into the game story right now. Um, and it, it just, it's so much fun. I, I can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, and part of the, the lore, too, now that we have the lore and we have the Wikipedia something that we are able to do and we're working on is like, how do we surface these things, right? Like as we work with Bisonic, for example, like um, they've even been asking like, can we have, you know, a monster manual or a sort of like um, index of like different types of items, like some sort of like, you know, top down organized document that kind of, or that shows like these pieces of what the world is. Like you might have like a, a printout book of, um, you know, items in Zelda or something. And so, yeah, I think one of the interesting things is that like the Loracle is able to read all of it and synthesize it. And that's getting better day by day. So in the lab too, on the tech side, um, we've got plenty of experiments in how we can kind of like organize the lore, present, like present it to users, make little pieces editable. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, the, there's a lot of tools in the lab that we're working on to really like organize like all the pieces of the Runiverse from the characters to the items to the spells to the locations. Um, so that that's that's basically a vision of, of some of the stuff we're building. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, okay. Here's a fun one. Speaking of lore, <laughs> and I sent this to the team like 20 minutes before the show started. So let's see if anyone has an. Uh, it has an answer for me. Uh, Meeple Dad wants to know what is your favorite Runiverse curse word? Um, does anybody have an answer to this? Because I do. Cobalt. Cucumber dog. Wow. Y you guys did not do your homework. I, I can tell. I consider I, like I consider being called a cobalt. Uh, well, it could be an insult or a compliment, depending. You, you know what, Bear? You're a real donut hole for that one. There uh, There's mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, okay. It's, it's all right. Uh, Matto or Donut. Do oh, wait. Matto, you said you had one. What about Tad? Hmm. Tad, you got one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I, I like to use like the Holy Arcanus is like a, a God damn it kind of situation, you know, like to really, really get after something. You're like, ah, oh, by the Holy Arcanus, you know, <laughs> got a good feel to it. Ah, Holy Arcanus, you're such a donut <laughs> hole like that. Yeah. Yes, nailed it. 
<laughs> okay, I don't really okay. like to curse in public. That, that's why, but you, you can say donut hole, right? Donut, I mean, that's, that's kid safe, right? If it's a curse word, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. I have to rethink it. Say it, Dota. Say it. Call me a donut hole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Meeple Dad, you just came up, and you're the one who asked that question. You, do you have one? Oh, uh, yeah. I've got a couple. I've got a couple. Most of my curse words, uh, for them familiar with language, you'll know that in French, all of the curse words revolve around the church. So I thought that in the Runiverse, the curse words should revolve around the beasts. Okay. So I've always thought that, like, like an exclamation, like when you stub your toe, like, ah, Chad Sack, ah, that hurt, you know? <laughs> Chad Sack, yes. Yeah. Yes. And then, uh, you know, there's a couple other good ones I'll, I'll read in Guckle's, uh, the, the orc lore or th that I'm going to read later. He's, he, he curses a fair bit, so there'll be a few more I'll tease out later. Fantastic. That, that's great. Okay, yeah, so Meeple, I know you, you actually wanted to read lore last week, and you got, you, we ran out of time. But you're going to read that lore today, right? That's the dream. That's the dream. Okay. And, and are you pressed for time? Like, do you need to do it now or do you want to do it later? We can do it later. We got time. We got time. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. I think the final cult question we have is, Jay of the Sun wants to know, do you believe in Dota Claws? Um, I mean, I believe in Dota, and and I think someone in the Secret Tower mentioned this. I, like, Dota's character looks much more like the Grinch than he does Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a, like an sneak, orange Grinch. If I sneak in your house at night at Christmas, I think I'm just going to take stuff. I'm not dropping anything <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I can't imagine you sneaking in through my window and stealing my stuff, but maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Man, I, I really want somebody to, like, just recolor the Grinch as, as, as Dota, like put the little sunglasses on him. That'd be so cute. Um, yeah, he'd look friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's actually all the lore questions we have for the day, unless I'm missing any in the secret tower. Um, I think, uh, I think another thing we can talk about is, uh, that Murad video that I think a lot of people saw. Yeah, we should share that up top. Let me try to share it. Um, so the one, this is, I think, one of the most interesting sort of crypto presentations I've seen in a while. Yeah, honestly. Bear, you're the one who surfaced it to me and Dota, I think, because it was at Token 2049, right? Uh, yes, I feel like maybe Young Nalge shared it with me, or I think maybe Young Nalge shared something with me that led me to it. It was one of those things. Young Nalge is so, always keeping us honest and... And in the loop. Yeah, and I can talk about it for those of you who haven't watched it. I pinned it at the top. You 100% should watch it. Um, and he basically talks about the meme coin super cycle. I would say that, like, the best analogy that I have for it is that, like, watching it um, was a watching it is like a moment of like deeply understanding the fundamentals of meme coins. In the same way of like that moment where you understood the fundamentals of NFTs, right? Is that like, I'm sure everyone here, when you first heard about NFTs, there was like maybe like a bit of either just misunderstanding or even skepticism. And then it's the same thing with meme coins, right? They're like so far out there on the like the risk curve and how they feel like arbitrary and they're not backed by anything, right? Like, like a lot of us maybe even feel like about meme coins or have felt about meme coins that like our normal friends feel about crypto at all. Right. Um, and, and he does, he, he, it's the most like single place articulated um, like worldview about why meme coins actually have quite a lot of utility in terms of the sense of like belonging and in terms of um, like a, a religion replacement and being a way to like make it and being part of a, a community and having hope in the future. Um, yeah. And, I, 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 ju I just want to quickly say please. like, like even though he's like talking about meme coins, like everything he says, I think can actually be applied to almost any digital asset, any crypto token. Um, so it's really, it's like, it's about meme coins, but it's not, it's actually much bigger. Y yeah. It's really about like communities having belief around uh, a token, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's about culture driving the narrative with really any kind of digital asset, I think. 
yeah, I mean, I guess I'd love to hear your take on it. Like, so, oh, so that, I gave a little bit of an intro of what it is. I think it's worth your time watching. But what's kind of your take? Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, to me like what I what I pulled most from it is like number one, I felt like eighty percent of what he was saying makes a token strong can be applied to forgotten runes. Um, he, you know, he he hit a lot on these like cultural touch points. Um, he hit a lot on community, emotion, um, the desire of your community to create and build for you. Um, I mean, he calls it free cult labor. And, and, and I feel like that kind of sounds derogatory coming from a founder, but like that's the phrase he uses and it's, and it's a positive thing. Um, and boy, does Forgotten Runes have that. Um, yeah, I think, right. I feel like that's like a very cynical phrasing of it that he yep. uses because it's like, uh, it, but it's not like this idea of like free cult labor, like from a founder who gets something for free. It's this idea that like, we're all pulling in the same direction for something that we all are like working towards. Right. And so it's, yeah. it's this idea that you kind of have a, a community who is, building things because we all see the common vision in what in like in, like in this case like how we're trying to build like a decentralized um ip that everyone can benefit from and everyone can contribute to right yep. and if you have a token that is just totally um astroturfed or it's only funded by kind of like a few large players and there's like the only people talking about it are the people that are kind of on the payroll right like either like through KOLs or, or, you know, YouTubers that are getting paid or insiders that get, getting paid, you kind of have this, like, the labor is actually all like, like the idea that the only marketing for your token is paid labor is, is bad because that doesn't show that there's like real humans behind it who like care about what's happening. Um, it's, 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 it's just astroturfed. Right. And so, well, like you said, one of the things that he's, that he points out that's good is when you have a community who's like part of when he's pointing out, like, here are the things that I look for in communities that are going to be successful. And it's like the people are building and creating for that community. And so that's like an entire, like such a great signal for forgotten roots. Yeah. Right. Right. Like they, they're building because they want to, like, it's, they have the drive to, because they believe in what the, the unified vision is. And so it's like, you know, you're not like having these kind of like paid people who are coming in only because they're coming in for a paycheck, but because they genuinely want them because, when they lift the project up, they're being lifted up with the project and they understand that. So a thousand percent. Yeah. And, and, he, and he talks a lot about the memetic value and what exactly it means to, to be a meme. And, you know, th like this is something I've been talking about from day one, like our entire uh, genre and, and like theme of our project is, is, is built on memes. It's built on archetypes. Archetypes are ancient memes. They're timeless memes that have been with humanity for over 2000 years. And, you know, I, I think he's probably talking about memes like, like internet memes, like Mu Ding, you know, but, you know, I, I think like, like we, we have the most powerful memes in human history, which is all these ancient archetypes that humanity is still uh, observing and using. Um, and then he, he also has this interesting slide where he talks about unbundling religion. Um, you know, in, in software development, there's this concept of like unbundling something fundamental to the human experience. And, um, and, and religion is certainly one of those things that you can like unbundle, analyze and understand, and then apply it to your uh, like tech product. And, you know, I mean, if if forgotten runes is not unbundling religion, then I don't know what is. <laughs> um, I yeah, see, but I have to say that I think that slide made me feel incredibly uncomfortable, right? Because like I'm uh let's say religious person, we can debate the terminology, but like I think that like when I saw that I, I don't know, I guess I feel that like in some sense I even feel like that is a little bit of a cynical framing. Um, maybe if I can roll back on the unbundling idea. Yeah, like one of the like classic things through through tech for the years was this this like classic slide in the 2010s about unbundling Craigslist. So like, of course, we all know Craigslist, but one of the things, you know, you may or may not know is that like it's always been in Silicon Valley sites because they like can't understand why it's so ugly. You have this like brutalist drudge report aesthetic and it's this like 
incredibly profitable business with like an in, in, uh, impenetrable foothold on like the classifieds market. Like nobody can like beat Craigslist and, and they really only charge for like one or two sections. Everything else is like totally free and whatever. And so there's always been kind of this, it's probably a Chris Dixon post, right? The idea about like unbundling Craigslist and creating a bunch of different like types of startups to compete with Craigslist on all these other dimensions, right? Like housing and dating and, you know, uh, Facebook marketplace and all this stuff. So yeah, it is an interesting idea how he talks about this idea that like meme coins are like unbundling um, religion and how he talks about this idea that like part of the communities, like people get, um, you know, they get a community, they get um, guidance, right? They're like less lonely. They They're get less, identity. They get right. uh, answers, culture, like purpose, meaning, meaning, purpose, yeah, stress reduction, lifestyle and wellness recommendations, like how you should drink creatine every day. <laughs> yep. Escape from reality. So, like you know, hey, he makes he makes a fair case, though. I think um, it makes me feel like I don't know, icky to think about it, providing it, a replacement religion. But to provide those things for people, I feel like good about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm not a religious person, so it actually gives me a, it, it excites me um, because, yeah. you know, all the things that religion normally provides a person, there are other ways to give that to a person and to a community. And, you know, I, I, I like I think Forgotten Runes definitely gives people an identity and belonging and culture and meaning and purpose and uh, you know, guidance. And like, I mean, you know, I don't know how many times I've received DMs over the years telling me pe people from the community telling me that, that that's what Forgotten Runes has given them. Um, yeah. And I feel like when you think about that in the context of like meme coins in that presentation where he's saying like, this whole industry is just about speculation that like even DeFi coins are speculation just with more steps, right? Like the meme coins are the purest form of speculation. And it feels just so like um, mercenary. On the flip side, I feel like part of what we're doing with Forgotten Runes is trying to, like, even if someone else is mercenary about the role of community to make money, that isn't actually our goal insofar as it's like, no, we want to have an actual community where people come and celebrate creation, right? That's what we talk about. The one thing the cult asks is that you create. Yep, yep. I, he even used a phrase that I've used a lot, which is the human condition. And, and I've, I've often mentioned that in the context of like, what does it mean to be a human creating things in the age of age of AI? Um, mm. you know, and and I, I know this is like a point of contention between us, but yeah. I, I still maintain like it's, it's going to it's going to become more and more important for humanity to assert their identity, to assert who they are, especially in this new digital age. You know what's funny? I'm, I forgot to tell you this. I'll tell you this now, which is like. Um, I've been watching like the talks of like the longshoremen and then like, um, one of the like things that they've talked about is that part of their deal that they don't want is automation. Right. And they're like, they're like, Oh, the, the, the docks, I don't know. I don't know the structure. Right. But like they're making it so the trucks can drive in and they're checked in automatically instead of like checking with a dock worker, which is like in our contract. And like, you would think that I would naturally be the person that's like, good, like automation is incredible. Like, like, of I course we that. should have, I would <laughs> think yeah. that too. <laughs> of course we should have the most efficient docs, but like, I definitely had a moment where I was like, eh, I can yep. kind of see it. Like, yep. like, but why, like, why do, you, do you, that. why do you feel that way in, with that specific example? Because, because you could like, like identify with the sad guy who doesn't have a job anymore. Yeah. Because I, because AI is eating my job as a programmer. So I'm getting some empathy. Because... Uh, <laughs> yep, a lot of people define their politics simply by how it affects them and they don't apply empathy uh, to the community. But I think that like with AI, it's I'm actually coming around to this idea that AI is different, even though I think it's somewhat inevitable. Like I'm coming around to this idea that it's just like, oh, shoot, you're actually really are going to have, you know, Sam Altman. Elon Musk, Google, Microsoft own the most powerful models that do all the work for all the jobs that everyone else had. And I'm just like, yep. you know what? I guess like good on you, doc workers. Like, OK, is it the best time given the framing of like, you know, the storms and the people in trouble or whatever? No. But like 
this idea that you can kind of like link arms and try to fight to like fight back the tide. I don't know. I was like kind of look Dota. I, I'm surprising we, myself that I was okay with it. I love what you're saying. You know, it, we Dota and I sometimes have political uh, discussions behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> well, and, they're behind uh, the scenes now. Yeah. And you, like, look, like all I really want is to maximize human well-being for as right. many people as possible. And if you're going to tell me that efficiency and optimization in the workforce is uh, is going to maximize efficiency and optimization at the expense of human well-being, I'm not sure that's progress. I'm not sure that's the best thing for humanity at large. It'll maybe be good for like three billionaires, right. but that's not humanity. So, you know, this is ob- we're getting we're going on a tangent, but like, yeah. Yep. But but yeah, I mean, back to the Murad thing, like, you know, I, I like when he started mentioning like the human condition and building communities that that uh, optimize that and make humans feel heard and, and valuable and uh, unique. You know, the, I think Forgotten Runes so far has done that quite well um, on so many levels. And so, you know, I don't know, the, the whole Murad presentation just really got me excited because it made me feel like. We're on a pretty good track. Um, you know, there's definitely things we can improve, but like our core fundamentals are strong, I think. Yeah, I think that like one of the f- one of the like main pieces where we divert from what he talks about is he basically says in the meme coin super cycle, having real revenue is a detriment. Shipping a real product is a detriment. And so like clearly I don't agree with that. Like um I think that like, yes, fine, you'll have that as part of a um, trend. But I also, I don't know, I guess for me, I'm not that interested in launching 5,000 new meme coins a day to like see which one hits and then rug the rest, right? Like I have to disagree with him fundamentally in having like belief that it's worth doing something. Like I believe that it's worth like coming into the world that like your efforts matter that creating something matters, building something matters. And that like trying to build a concrete business that can last for a long time matters. And, um, and so I think, I do think that's like one part that, that I'm a bit kind of like, I'm able to hold in both my hands. Like in one hand, you're able to say like, look, the meme coin super cycle is coming and it's important that you understand how it works and that you probably allocate some of your portfolio accordingly, like agreed. But on the other hand, He's basically like, so why bother doing anything else? Because like a real product is just a meme coin with extra steps. And it's like, no, because like somebody has to do good in the world and like build something real. And so I think that'd be a part where I disagree. He also has his own meme coin. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is it, like, is it SP? I mean, now Gene, now Gene can hit us in the DMs or come up on stage, but I think he literally had like, he's behind like SPX, I think it is, or. I forget what it is, but like when you realize you're like, oh, like he's pushing his own, like go look, go look at his Twitter account. He's like pushing meme coins now. And I'm just like, right. oh, that kind of changes my perspective. Wait, Bear, you, you're saying this entire authentic, sincere message was really just in service of shilling his own. It's, meme a sh- it's the ultimate shill. It's the non shill <laughs> shill. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, he does. No, 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 no. no. Certainly, Listen, he does have his own coin, but I don't think that was the point. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But it is, okay. it is funny that now, like, he's, he's, you know, he's. What he's doing is, is he's marketing his product. He's talking right. about why he thinks meme coins are important, and whether I'm not sure if it's, if it's, if, if he, he's on the, the team of the coin or he's a bag holder. But I think it still fits. It doesn't like it doesn't like uh, wipe out what he's saying at all. I think sure, he's just yeah. Building. It's like if you believe in something, you should be building in that space. That makes yeah. sense. But I think that like it's also helpful to know that he speaks so much in absolutes. But like, he, yeah, he has bags behind the scenes for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, but I just think like you. I'm not that interested in that degree of nihilism being my like purpose in life, something like that. Like, like, like that, like I want to make things that are real. Right. And so I guess I would preface, you know, anybody who kind of watches this video on my recommendation, right. Which is like, it's useful. It's very useful for, it's, it's very useful for understanding like 
it actually reminded me a lot of the the um, NFT hierarchy of needs graphic that we posted like three years ago, right? Where it's like with NFTs, you want the sense of like belonging and community and like, yeah, maybe the, the foundation of the pyramid is profit, but the, um, the, 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 the substance is like the things you build and the friends you make along the way. It's, it's interesting that you have a nihilistic interpretation of some of what he said. I mean, like I can understand it if he says like, don't build anything, don't even write a white paper, just focus on the meme. I can see how you would interpret that as nihilistic, but, but when he's talking about like humanity and emotion and community and belonging and, and like unbundling religion, that seems very authentic and hopeful to me. But I think that the underlying thing, like he shows charts in there, that's like, um, he basically shows a, a slide in there that's like the bar chart of how much is the belief value. And it comes from like, I think maybe an old DGen Spartan tweet where it's like DeFi coins are like 5% fundamentals and 95% meme. Yep. And then meme coins are 100% meme. Yep. Right. And, and then he basically says like, I actually think that's even going to grow even further. I think that meme coins are going to steal the meme value from DeFi coins. And so like his implication is something like, if you want to make money, meme coins are where you need to be because I think meme coins are going to be a trillion dollar market. There's going to be meme coin dominance rankings and all this. Like meme, he even says like, I think that meme coins are going to out meme Bitcoin. That you should like, that you're going to make more money in meme coins even even than Bitcoin. They're going to be a better meme than even Bitcoin in terms of a store of value, right? And so it's like, that's the the end point if you take that to its extreme then you basically just say like well then wh like what am i working so hard for like, <laughs> I, okay well, let me try let me try to answer that question which is like I, okay th maybe this sounds too idealistic but but sure. like if, if i could like glean away what the value of what he's saying and incorporate it into what we're doing i, I think like it doesn't mean we stop building but it does mean we ask why we're building what we're building and and like really have a strong answer yeah. who yeah. we're building for. That's right. And and really like, like like everything we build has to have this community oriented mimetic value to it. Yeah, and like one of the things that one of the lenses you can view like apps and like products in is like um well, okay, like business apps are jobs to be done, but but consumer apps are like an emotion, a fundamental emotion. And like the closest, the closer you can represent a fundamental emotion or like manifest that emotion in, in your app, yep. the more successful you'll be. Yep. Right. And, exactly. and so I think that's extremely useful to know. Um, yep. And I think it's also useful where to know that it's like, given that we're a project in the crypto space to try to like tune into that wavelength of what makes the most successful products. Like, to, to try to have this view, like, can we be successful and keep our soul while creating something substantial? And I think, I believe the answer is yes. Like, I think that the meme coin super cycle is just like a, um, a consequence in like the step of crypto, right? You can, we talk about this a lot. You can walk through crypto and find all of these phases that don't really repeat, right? First, it's like Bitcoin then Bitcoin forks, then like alt L ones then DeFi, then NFTs and memes, right? And like, the, the industry progresses and I actually see memes more as like a stepping stone rather than kind of like, all stop building things. It's pointless. It's only memes now. Like, yes, it's maybe that's true this second, but I don't think it's that way forever. Yeah. I mean, here, I think here's the biggest weakness of, of memes, which is the, the, the shelf life. Like, yep. I, like Mudeng. I love Mudeng. She's adorable. But next, next month, Mudeng is going to be dead and gone. That's right. Um, you know, so it's like you can't that's one reason reason why you can't build a, an, an empire on a single meme. But right. I think like to give strength to your empire, you leverage mimetic value in, in yeah. all the different ways that that's possible. Yeah, right. Yeah. Create a franchise that allows memes to proliferate within it. Right. Star Wars being a great example. Exactly. Yeah, I think because like if you're dealing with if you're solely valued based off of memes and like nothing else but like the meme, it's like then you're competing with everybody else who literally can spin up like thousands of memes like you know every every minute of the day, and that's why it's like extremely PvP. Where it's like you know there's there's like very little um, bar of entry for making a, a meme coin, right? It's just literally throw up an image, throw it up on you know on um, Pump.Fun, 
and you know do some marketing with it right and then like if it's already a meme that somebody else like the zoo like like you know the zoo already does the marketing for you right so it's like you already have that leveraging on you but like you're relying on like the zoo keeping mudang you know popular and that's like kind of almost out of you unless you continue building off of it so building off of them and continuing that value off of like your community and using your community too because like having a community like a lot of the best memes are like the meme coins that like people are like making like really funny videos of like when i see like like not chilling or anything but like i don't have i don't hold any mod but like the mod videos are hilarious but like you see like a random like they'll have like an actual like 3d model going around and like shooting other other projects and stuff like that's funny you know stuff like that but if you don't have like any of that like in the like, community or any of that like building or any kind of anything except for just like we're just going with just the meme and hoping that meme things relevant without putting any effort into keeping it relevant. I feel like it's really hard to even like have it survive more than like a week or two, you know? Yep. Okay, but for real, how much do you guys love Mudang? So I love cute. it. Like, he's, he's so cute. cute. Yeah. I think like anything like this, you get kind of like <laughs> like eating too much candy at some point. We're like, yes. all right, that's, that's enough. But like, yeah, Mudang is just adorable. Oh, the, the cutest animal on the planet right now. I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Like, like Pesto, the penguin, ain't got shit on Mudang. Not like, nice try, Pet Pesto. Nice try, penguin. But yeah. no, yeah. Mudang is the queen. <laughs> yeah, and I think that like, that's one of the strengths that we have is we paint a picture of a meme that can last 100 years, right? Because people will still be reading Lord of the Rings 100 years from now. And, um, and, and, and the line, the witch in the wardrobe, like those things are going to last. And I would much rather spend my time focusing on something that that's going to last, that, that, that can be successful in a durable way. And I think like Forgotten Runes is the seed of that. We, ha we have to embrace the paradox of the timeless meme. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, well, dude, man, that was actually a really fun conversation. I, I miss Wizard Wednesday, where we just wax yeah. intelligently about things. Uh, but unfortunately, Bear Snake always comes in and 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 crashes. That is boring. <laughs> boring. <laughs> <Not> boring. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we, we actually have a few other things to get to. And, and Meeple, don't worry, I haven't forgotten yet about you. I want you to read your lore. Um, but Sporkly actually asked a question. Um, and she said, uh, what's an enemy or element within the game that you've had a difficult time building into the lore? Um, okay, honestly, Sporkly, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Um, but but I'll, I'll try to answer it in the way that I think you're, you mean. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like, like I said earlier, uh, I've, I've, I've really, my, my biggest job in the past, I don't know, month or two has been really aligning all of the stuff in our uh, in our original NFT collections and the book of lore and the Wizipedia with the game. I, I want that to be so much more tight. Um, and so the, the, the one thing that sort of like gets in the way of that is of course, game mechanics. Um, you know, so like, you know, the, the, the most important thing for a game is the game mechanics. Everything else falls in line behind that. And so like an example the other day is like I wrote a spell that that brings that if you cast it, uh, you bring someone back to life. Um, and but by, by Sonic got back to me and we're like, oh, I'm sorry, we, we don't have like a bring back to life feature uh, built yet in our spell repertoire. Um, so I had to change that. But it's like. Really, that's the biggest thing that that is the biggest blocker for any kind of lore is just straight up game mechanics or game features. Um, but I don't know if that's actually what you're asking, but that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, I also think that like one of the things that is on the horizon um, that's so exciting is the ability to kind of use the NFT assets as mechanics in the game. Like, I don't think that anybody has really fully recognized just how powerful it's going to be to have um, a game for which to provide utility for the various tokens, right? I think the, the Eva memory build and the new foundations build are these kind of like the fundamental platform, right? It takes a really, really, really long time. And a lot of people, a lot of talented people working very hard to even get a game that's like as beautiful as it was that has mechanics that are thought that are thought through um, to be able to have a multiplayer game that scales with the amount of people that we had. And 
And I think as a part of that, maybe some of the things that we wanted for NFT utility haven't made it in yet, but they're like totally on the roadmap, right? We've talked about this idea of having um, ponies in the game. Actually, I don't want to give away a bunch, but this idea that like the, the that the NFTs have utility is, um, well, like I feel that like the lift with tokenomics is so heavy and so permanent, right? Like when you do something that's like, oh, you burn your wizard for a soul, um, that's so permanent. Whereas like with when you have a game, there are things that you can do for utility that are a bit more like evergreen, right? So you saw this with the rings that you're able to tap the rings every day to get a bit of mana, and and so yeah, I'm yeah very excited about kind of the future NFT utility that's coming, and I want everyone to know that it's like it's not like it's we're not aware that kind of we didn't get 100% of the NFT utility in on the beta. Like, sorry, it's, it's but we're for sure planning some uh, in the future builds. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So Sparkly gave me some clarification. She's basically just asking, uh, well, well, okay. Well, she put it as like lore writing bounties to explain plot plot holes in the game. But you know, if, if I could like interpret your question more generally, I, I think like basically you're just asking: Is there any way for the community to contribute lore to the game? Um, and, and my answer is yes, definitely. I mean, that's what I'm working on now. Like that's why I'm plumbing the book of lore in the Wikipedia. I'm looking for community created lore. Um, you know, so so I guess like the first question I or the first thing I would tell you is like make sure you uh, have your book of lore story written. Um, if you want to contribute to the Wizipedia, definitely go for it, because then the Loracle learns that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's that's the, really the best way. Um, and then like, you know, another way is just like publish your lore on Twitter, publish your cult content on Twitter, like, you know, get it get it out there as 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 far and wide as possible so that people see it. Like, you know, th there's sort of this like I I'm going to call it like a Darwinian lore mechanism where like the strongest lore rises to the top and catches people's attention and thus ends up in these other media expressions um but but yeah i mean it, you know it's it's really like the game that every ip plays which is like how do you get your lore into the zeitgeist um you know i mean that's really it uh there's no like magic formula or like official form for you to fill out it's just like make your lore compelling is the best thing I yeah. can do right now. And I would say that like Matto has done arguably the best job out of any cult member in like the kind of visual aspect of this, right? Which um, is, and that's why Matto ended up on a comic book cover. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and so like just looking at like the degree, even from that, and it wasn't necessarily that there was just one thing, right? It was this like, I mean, it's been three years of just like pretty regular um, publishing of artwork of Magus Devon from really any medium possible, right? Everything from dolls to VTubers to illustrations and watercolors, and whatever. So I think that's one path that's actually like somewhat, I don't want to say easy, but maybe like it's straightforward enough to understand, which is like, create images of your character and you're completely unforgettable. Um, I think there may be like other aspects that are possible around kind of like narrative. I would say that like solo pop, for example, has done a good job on, um, on that. Of course. I mean, not, not only with like his 3d videos, but like even in the early days, solo, you were writing stuff about like the milk guild, right? Am I attributing that properly? Um, like some of those early stories were just like so stunning that, that you can't forget them. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sporkly just replied, uh, make your whiz so real that not having them in the game would feel weird to the Lord addict. There you go. Like, like, yeah, like make your story, your wizard so compelling that it would be, it would feel weird to have them missing. Um, the Steve Martin strategy, right? Be so good. They can't ignore you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, you know, I'll say like w Magic Machine does have like a spreadsheet with all the community's wizards on it. Um, I use that quite frequently. Um, we're always updating it. Um, and and, uh, I, and I'm working on tools like the Book of Lore is always a work in progress. Right. And there's it's just so obvious now that there's like a bunch of key pieces that are missing for like 
even even the idea of like organizing all of the artwork for Magus Devon, I don't think is all in the book of lore. And that's like actually more of like my fault in terms of prioritization of book of lore features rather than um, Maddo's fault for just like not putting it there. Right. So I think there's a lot of tools that we're going to be adding over the coming year or two um, that, that make all that easier and it's easier to surface. Yeah, even just getting featured in, in the Cult Content Chronicle by the illustrious Tanya Del Rio, that's actually huge. That's like, you want to get featured in the Cult Content Chronicle um, yeah. for so many reasons. Um, but, uh, but yeah, before we get to that, Meeple, I want to hand it over to you. Are you ready, buddy? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Good afternoon. Are you guys ready to hear the sad story? Oh no! Of Guckle. <laughs> Guckle. They're going to be cursing. <laughs> there will be Runiverse cursing. Don't worry. Yeah. Guckle. Um, hold on. I, I think what Dota is asking is: it should he mute or should he put uh, cotton swabs yeah. in his children's ears? Yeah. Do I need to plug my ears? No. No. <laughs> okay. It, it, okay. It, it, <laughs> It's all PG Runiverse cur cursing, the best kind of cursing. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, proceed then. <laughs> the uh, Guckle is a new member of my team. Uh, this I won. Uh, this is one of the warriors that I won in the Dow auction just a couple of weeks ago, and he is a goblin with a beer bottle, and uh, and 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 thus begins his story. And stay out, the innkeeper shouted as Guckle fell face first in the mud on the road. The cold rain and the wet road was enough of a shock that Guckle sobered up with a start. Wiping puddle from his face, his head spun as if he was going to be sick. 18 goblin brews will do that to you. A wagon went by just as he retched all over the road, splashing his own vomit and mud water back in his face. Ugh, I need a drink, was all he could say to himself. The brown wizard Delta is always wet this time of year, but this was a particularly damp spot. All the good spots to hide out for the night had either been soaked or completely flooded out. Uh, Farmer Maggot said he'd kill me if he found me in the pig pen again, but only if he can catch me. I'll just hit the road early, Guckle mumbled to himself. But it already was early. He'd passed out at the bar, having drank away all the money he'd gotten from pawning his sword and armor. No one was hiring mercenaries these days anyway, so who needed them? Only a few hours remained before dawn, and Guckle's head was pounding already. The pigs were warm and cozy to snuggle with, but when Guckle opened his eyes, he could see sunrise streaming through the cracks of the barn boards already. Chickens were clucking loudly, which must have meant Maggot was up feeding them. Slinking out through the pig flap, he trotted off, hopping the fence and climbing down the dike, disappearing into the marshy brush down by the river. Now, to call the Riley River just a river kind of sells it short. Nowhere in the Runiverse are you going to find another remotely of its size. Its banks normally are almost a kilometer across during the low season. But a flood year like this, it would be five kilometers or more. Drox Crossing was probably completely underwater by now, flooded out as the rising river overflowed the causeway's sidebars. It was this power of the epic waterway that brought the delta to life rich sediments carried down from the mountains in the north were said to have special powers the glaciers in the north have something magical about them and that magic comes down in the spring meltwater carried out over the flood delta across the brown wizard's fields and into the reservoirs and retaining ponds this along with the mechanical and magical creations of the brown wizards helps keep the rich crops and oddly intelligent livestock seen throughout the Brown Wizard Delta and down into Cumberland. It's even said that the creatures of Cumberland owe their ancestry to these waters and their magic. When you hear wizards say there's something in the water, now you know what they mean. 
Guckle made his way through the bush and the brush, looking for the dock. Damn that farmer, where's he tie up his boat in flood season? But Guckle couldn't find the boat anywhere. Ah, Chad Sack, where is it? He won't find it. Uh, Guckle groaned. He recognized the farmer's calm and peaceful voice. The brown wizard stood, staff in hand, pointed squarely at Guckle. I told you, be gone or you'd be gone. But you just couldn't help yourself, could you? Even though Guckle was in no shape to fight, he instinctively reached for a sword anyway. His hand felt only his belt. You pawned it, you drunken fool, remember? Guckle froze, racking his foggy brain. How the hell was he going to get out of this one? He turned to this face of the wizard. L listen, listen, maggot, you, you don't understand. There's been a misunderstanding. A blast of brown mud shot forth from the staff and Guckle wound to the ground. Save it. I'm not interested, the farmer hissed. Wiping the splattering of mud from his overalls. My ominous threat clearly didn't get through your thick skull. So now you must live with the consequences. Goodbye, you miserable creature. Maggot lowered his staff, taking aim at the goblin. Guckle looked up staring deep into his executioner's eyes, and he broke. Please, please, no, maggot, I want to live. Zwap! A bolt of green and brown light shot forth from the staff, and Guckle could feel the gr muddy grass under him begin to move and grow, reaching around him, binding and constricting him. The grass and the vines grew tighter and tighter. This is it. This is how it ends for me, thought Guckle. He closed his eyes and gave in, waiting for the end. And waiting. And waiting. The silence was broken by a hearty laugh from Maggot. Not the evil laugh of a murderer killing, a helpless, help, killing the helpless, but a roaring belly laugh of a joker. You think I'd let you off that easy? <laughs> no, no, the shadows shall not take you today, Guckle. Your destiny is much, much worse. You are to be given to the river. Riley, take you. And with that command, the grass and the reeds that had wrapped around him lifted him up, floating on the flooded field, creating a magical raft of reeds and mud, drifting him out, out over the landscape and into the wide, quick-moving stream that then became the massive river. Wait, wait, no, stop. Come, come back. You can't do this to me. No. Fox's fury, bring me back, maggot! Chad Sack, get me out of here! Guckle shouts and cries for help, faded off as the wizard chuckled to himself, turning, heading back to his farm. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes! Grab it, grab it, grab it! Rusty, the battle penguin, was always on the lookout for loot. The high river brings more gifts than a low tide during skull crab season. The penguin leaned over the side of the ship, looking eagerly as the ship hands threw a line to snare the odd floating raft. The delta ducks that had nested on the raft honked and flew away angrily. What in Chimera's name is this mess? The penguin puzzled. T a tangled balls of grass, river weeds, and the mud that was Guckle was pulled aboard and dumped on the deck. Bugbear's balls! I think it's alive! exclaimed the penguin, kicking Guckle in the side of the head. The blob groaned. Wah. Unwrap it! Unwrap it! said the penguin, squealing with glee. It's like a treasure trove on Wisbus morning! The sheer mystery of it was almost more than the tiny snowbird could handle. Get the captain! Get the captain! He's going to want to see this! The crew just about had poor Guckle untangled and upright by the time Arkel arrived on the deck. The goblin was a mess, but alive and awake, barely. Rusty, this better be good. I was in the middle of something. Arkel, the goblin captain, a massive stature, came around the ship's mast and looked down at the disheveled Guckle. Arkel stopped dead in his tracks. The two goblins stared for a long time at each other, an uncomfortable moment. Imp's mischief, 
Arkel was lost for words. Car- uh, Guckle couldn't believe his dumb, stinking luck. Of all the miserable ways to end up, that damned wizard couldn't have been more right. Death would have been a favor. Guckle wiped the river weeds from his face and broke the silence. Hello, little brother. To be continued. Oh, yeah. Maple, there are so many little details that I wanted to stop and comment on. There's, there, there's so many little Easter eggs in there that have like tons of lore research behind them. I, I like, I know every little detail that you're, that you fit in there, like where it's from, why you put it there. I, I, I love a good, uh, well-researched piece of lore. Um, it just, it just gives it a lot of like substance to, to, to really just sink your brain into, um, and I noticed how like every curse in there was, was taken from the beasts. Um, and it was just fun. I mean, like I love, love a good, like drunken wizard, drunken goblin story. <laughs> I just, it's just a funny idea to me. Um, and like, finally, I, this, this is what I love about the fantasy genre, which is like, you know, you, you've got stories that are typically characterized as, high fantasy these like grand epic narratives that could be told as 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 like poems in the halls of a king but then you can also do these like banal like commonplace everyday little slice of life stories about a drunk goblin and 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 that's fantasy it's got the whole gamut of 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 storytelling in it and it all works um so yeah that that was great meeple dad i think that was one of the best pieces of lore you've shared so far my my thing that I always try to remind people of when you're writing is, you know, your character is, it can be grand and fantastic, but if you can bring life to, you know, the miserable and the mundane, uh, that's sometimes richer. That's sometimes more relatable. And as always with a good story, it's, it's not necessarily the character or, or the story. That's the exciting part. It's the relationship between them and the idea of like, the successful younger brother finding his wash up waste of an older brother uh, and, and having to, you know, the the potential (laughs) of the two, uh, you know, that's, that's the part of the story that I'm really excited about telling next. So. Exactly. Um, Two Easter eggs. I think uh, everyone's favorite curse word is bugbear's balls. Um, That is being put into the secret tower right now. (laughs) Um, and then finally, uh, is that the same uh, far- farmer maggot from the Shire? Uh, it's definitely inspired uh, by farmer maggot from the Shire, but I I don't actually have a brown wizard uh, that that is specifically referring to. So if anyone has a brown wizard that wants to be nicknamed farmer maggot, let me know and we can we can weave it in together. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, I mean, you know, if the Shire was anywhere in the universe, it would be up in that Delta area that you were talking about, for sure. Um, I love it, man. Well well done, people. Oh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Um, okay, uh, we've got, well, we're over time, but, uh, but uh, we will not end the show without getting to the uh, cult content chronicle compiled by the illustrious Tanya Del Rio. Every damn week. Week. Hey. Yay! Oh my God, we're so good. That's <laughs> two in a row, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we finally got it, guys. <laughs> um, okay, there's actually a lot of good pieces in the Chronicle this week, and, and I want to just sort of hit on some of them. Um, first one being a very, very impressive piece by a very impressive wizard, Dr. Solo Pop himself. Uh, has released his new AI short film called Ouroboros. Um, team, how much did we fangirl over this one? Uh, it was breathtaking. It was breathtaking. It was so incredible. I loved it. Yeah. Solo, if you want to come up and, and just talk about it a little bit, you're totally welcome to. Um, you know, I, 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 from, from, from my own part, I just want to say, like, you know, I, I think I've been the most critical of just AI art in general on the team. But, you know, I also just want to acknowledge, like, I know how much work Solopop puts into this. I know how much, like, 
decision making and editing and taste and and really just just work goes into making some like this you know it is by no means just solo or anyone just saying uh make a movie about of ouroboros and then pressing a button and then it's done like that obviously that's not at all how it happens so much work and like human oversight goes into this um so so yeah i mean solo i i just man i i really just love that you seem to be like one of the most like like avant-garde ai filmmakers in the world today i you know, I don't know. I don't know of anyone else. Maybe my uh, my feed is just sort of biased, but you're really just like pushing this medium into just really new and interesting places. And I'm just so glad that you're using Forgotten Runes as like a foundation to make your films. I'm just so honored, man. Um, so, oh, wait, he's, he's requesting now. Um, I'll say too, I, I think Solo Pop is an unbelievable storyteller and that's the part that comes through for me in each and every one of his pieces so bravo for amazing interesting new ways to tell stories thank you meeple hey everyone what up buddy well what well up, done on the film yeah yeah thank you thank you put a lot of time uh into that one and as you said it's not just like pressing a button right i i used my monthly 60 hours of processing time of mid journey for that one and um and all the credits for the image to video as well but uh but it was like uh, worth it the thing is we'll get to that point right where even what i'm doing will sort of be replaced unfortunately uh but um yeah i'm afraid he's gonna tend there it's gonna go there yeah solo you know and this is like a whole other side conversation i, I i'm starting to have my I don't know if I would say doubts, but I, I'm, I'm starting to just like second guess that notion. Like, will we ever get to the place where it's like, make a movie about this, press a button, and it's flawless. You know, I don't know. It's like, I'm sure we probably will, but maybe it's at least going to take a lot longer than we all thought. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're off on another topic. I, <laughs> you, I'm seeing this a lot in code because I feel like code is actually farther along than probably anything else in terms of AI generation. And literally like one of the issues is like, you can set, you can set AI and say like, Oh, I want an app that does this. And, and it can make a plan it can write code that runs, it can write the test, it can write the documentation. But then what happens is you realize you're like, oh, you made this design choice over here, but I wanted this other design choice. And so now you have to like roll back up way to the beginning to actually get what you even wanted because you didn't even articulate it. Like there is literally no way that it could have known. And so I think that art is gonna be like that a lot, right? That, 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 that yeah, it'll plan something, but is it any good? Solo commentary. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I think it might take longer, but I, I think it will like get to that to that point. Um, but at least what I'm excited about for like what I'm doing is just like the output that we can get right now. Um, and yeah. So I had just tested like Cling uh, 1.5 that had just came out, and it lets you do uh, 1080p exports, um, which then when you put it into an AI upscaler, like it's way more pretty and detailed than what you were able to get before. And, you know, we're only about like one year in AI video being actually sort of decent. So like, I can't put my, my head around uh, what it's going to be in a year. And, and we, we could talk a lot about like the techniques and the, the, the technology underneath it, but you know, really more important is like the art and the story itself and the, the artistic merit of what you just made. Do you want to, do you want to just make, say any, have, say anything about that? Oh yeah. So I, like the reason I used AI is just because for me, it's just the easiest way to tell a certain story or a cer certain like concept. And uh, the shows I, I love the most is, um, and um, anthology shows um, where uh, it's like um, Black Mirror or Love, Death, Robots, where every episode is different and it's short and it's dystopian. And like dystopian concepts are, are very interesting to tell. And without using AI, it would be very, very hard. Like, again, I'm not, I can't paint, I can't draw, 
Um, I, I don't write that well. And so using this tool is just like much easier. And so I had this idea for the Euroboros. And um, yeah, I'm happy on how, how it came out. Um, and yeah, it's hard to beat the visuals that you can get out of it. Awesome, man. Awesome. I'm, I'm so glad you're making these. It's, it's so cool, man. Um, all right. Well, well done, Pops. Uh, everybody in the cult loves it. Um, okay. Uh, number two, uh, the Black Sand Pony Burn is drawing near. Um, and they have shared a uh, sneak peek of one of the ponies that you can get from Sweetbread. Um, man, Sweetbread, this is a badass looking pony. It's like, it's like a dark... Mummy Mom, unicorn Mom. on fire. <laughs> it's so cool. You know what I'm saying? What's that, Matto? Did... Nothing, nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I actually was unmuted. I didn't realize. Okay. All good, man. Um, okay. Uh, number three. Um, let's see. Hi, I am Nate. Yeah, I think I read that right. Uh, Another beautiful piece from this week. Hi, uh, hi, I am Nate. Made just a really beautiful piece of pixel art of their warrior. Um, and uh, I, I think my favorite part about it is like the uh, the Black Panther that they have sitting next to the warrior. Um, it's just it's just so cool. Um, and then Nate also printed some QR codes. I got to say, Nate, when I first looked looked at this, I thought it was a sheet of blotter acid. Uh, but no, it's QR codes. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I'm the only one that thought this was acid. Um, you can make it into a, a blotter sheet. How would we yeah. do that? <laughs> we do that for the next wizard wizard party. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It looks like a killer blotter sheet for sure. Uh, Daniela Illustra uh, continues having a piece in every single cult cult, con cult content chronicle. Uh, work in progress. Uh, with uh, with two crows in it, um, Reeves.io. Uh, we had them on uh, a few episodes ago, um, and I'm glad to see that the project is still going. It's a it's a game jam using uh, some Forgotten Runes assets, um, and uh, yeah, it looks like uh, a lot of progress is being made. Um, super cool. Uh, Tanya Del Rio is has been engaging in uh, Inktober. Um, yeah, and so, I love this one. What, tell us why you love this one, Dota. Because it's about me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, she, she did one of Dota. It's super cool. Um, she did one of me today that I shared. Uh, but yeah, we love, we love Inktober, especially when Tanya uh, participates. Um, Meeple Dad... Uh, went to an MTG convention and uh, asked um, one of the artists there to do some freaking adorable wizard commissions. Did you guys see this? Yeah. It's so cute. They're so good. I wanted to see like a higher res version because the one that I see was like in, like had like plastic reflections. So Meeple Dad, send us a, a scan yeah. or just a straight on shot. Yeah, she's uh, she's sending me the digitals. She scanned them in nice. Um, yeah, this is from the event I hosted just last weekend, Command Fest, which is the big magic tournament, what well, the biggest one that I hosted so far this year. And this is a local artist, Rebecca. She's amazing. She works as an animator doing like the Minions movies and stuff like that. But she just comes to MTG shows and draws draws people's characters. So, yep. Meeple, that's so great, man. Yeah, she's incredibly talented. I love this style. Very cool. Um, and then also Meeple Dad shared a sneak peek of Treasure Trove 2.0. Meeple, again, very impressive. I like. I don't even know how you make this box. Yeah, this is like the cult Meeple Chronicle today. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the, in fact, the next one is also from the Treasure Trove, from Meeple Dad, uh, sharing another sneak peek of, uh, of one of the cards that will be in the Treasure Trove. Um, and then uh, Virgilius the Sorcerer shared uh, some really awesome uh, Japanese-inspired artwork. Man, Virgilius is, like, really building out that region of the Rooniverse. Um, I mean, he basically owns that region now, which is, which is awesome. I love it. Um, and then uh, Sharon uh, shared uh, some, some images of her soul uh, and her familiar. Uh, man, that bat is adorable. Um, 
and then the absolute man of the galaxy. Nice handle, bro. Uh, shared uh, an image of his soul uh, in pixel art. Very cool. Uh, Magus Wazir uh, shared himself and his shadow self. Uh, his version on September 30th and then his version on October 1st. Um, okay, this is one of my favorites. Dalek's Lab is like basically making what looks like a full like 3D MMORPG. <laughs> um, probably not really, probably just like a little test of a, of a, of a wizard casting a spell, but like just this test. It looks so good. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually DM'd Dalek's Lab earlier today and just like got a handle of what it, on what he's building. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's just playing around, but man, like, when Dalek's lab plays around, uh, we all get super impressed. Yep. Um, so yeah, well done, man. Um, Hail dot Ron. Uh, I think Hail dot Ron shared an image of this wizard last week, and now he's got him in like a new pose. Um, this one, it, it's so cool. It's so I love this version of this wizard. Uh, very cool. Um, Dilo uh, shared uh, an image of his warrior. Um, Crucifor. Uh, shared a really just beautiful illustration of his pyromancer Crowley. Um, Maddow, uh, man, Maddow, last week you shared some cannabis and this week you're sharing mushrooms. What's, what's going on? I mean, there's free stuff just in the backyard. I mean, <laughs> but they don't want you to know you can get free food and plants in the backyard, medicine, <laughs> like <laughs> big food and big farm and brainwash everyone. <laughs> yeah. You're so right, Maddo. They just don't grow want you to know. The <laughs> earth gives it stuff. to you. <laughs> yeah. Mother Super Earth cool. provides. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, Jason continues with Daily Dancing, Wizzy Busy Vitties, uh, number 72. Uh, Adept Igduel uh, continues with Awesome Gens of His Wizard. Uh, Meeple Dad continues with Riddles in the Dark. Uh, and, of course, Magic Monday News. Episode seventy nine um, is continuing, and I think I think that's all we got. I think that's all we got. Um, that was a fun chat today um, yeah, about nice. Murad. It's nice to have a like a content piece to chat on, and I also think is really helpful. You know, there's a bunch of tweets um, uh, that he's even putting out right now. He's worth a follow, right? Where he's talking about how uh, the biggest. This is a quote from his tweet. Uh, the biggest outperformers have always been cults. Bitcoin, yep. I'm sure you'd agree it's a cult. Ethan Soul, culty to some extent. Ripple, Cardano, Luna, Hex, they all went ballistic. So I bet think, uh, yeah, the the advice from Murad is uh, to bet on cults. It's, uh, it's a good thing we're a cult. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Entropy, you got that uh, that music ready to go? I sure do. It's Wizard Wednesday. It's Fired up. Wednesday. I don't know. I like I like uh, Dota's acapella version. I mean, Dota, you, you're welcome to sing along for sure. I don't know all the words. <laughs> I, I I hope uh, you and your and your kids are working on the, the acapella version. Ooh, the we version. did buy a banjo. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, please. The the banjo yeah. version of this. <laughs> that would yeah. be great. The folk music version, I guess. Um, Okay, uh, this has been Elf, Dota, Dr. Solo Pop, Tad Major, Meeple Dad, uh, Matatsuki, Bear Snake, and uh, all of the wizards of the Forgotten Runes Wizards Cult. Channeling out from the Quantum Down. Channeling from the Quantum Down. Gene, everybody. Hi. It's Wizard Wednesday. Black Goat Elf, just a puppet too. Bear Snake by the Ocean Blue. It's Wizard Wednesday, it's Wizard Wednesday, Cobalt and Dream, Master Sword, putting their root on the door. It's Wizard Wednesday, forevermore, Wizards of Wednesday, Lore at the core. We are a cult, with a world of our own, never forgotten, or magic is known. Let's read from
from the book of lore. Legendary wizards at the core. Don't get lost in the quantum shadow. Abracadabra is a magical manifesto. Eat a donut, set your soul on fire. The sacred flame on a funeral pyre. The seventh gate with golden locks. The nightmare imp with a tree bar.